What even is water resistance and how is it different from being waterproof? Hi guys, I'm Vic once again from Phone Arena and today I want to break down what is water resistance, what is an IP rating and how is it different from being waterproof. Back in the day, think before the year 1976, people still needed to work with water resistant electrical and mechanical components, which meant that you needed to somehow certify if your device could be exposed to water or dust. At that time, some forms of certification existed in order to guarantee that your drill won't short out, for instance, but the system by which equipment was certified was not standard for all devices. This meant that you couldn't exactly tell whether one brand of watches had a better water resistance rating than, you know, another brand of watches. This is why, back in 1976, the International Electromechanical Commission, or the IEC for short, standardized the water resistance rating by introducing the Ingress Protection Rating, or as we know it, the IP rating. This meant that you could now easily discern how good against water or dust is a given device. And 34 years later, the first water resistant smartphone was released. It's the Motorola Defy, or DEFY, which features an IP67 rating for dust and water protection. Of course, back in 2010, this was still not a mainstream feature, so it took us a few more years to actually have it incorporated into all major flagships. Moving on to 2013, when Sony released their flagship first flagship with water resistance rating, the Sony Xperia Z featuring an IP55 and IP57 rating. Following Sony then, Sleep of Faith was Samsung with their Samsung Galaxy S5 released around 2014 featuring an IP67 rating, and afterwards, around the year 2016, in Apple's fashion of tried and true, they released the first iPhone, the iPhone 7, to feature an IP67 rating, or basically any water resistance at all. From that point on, almost all flagship and some mid-range devices feature some form of water resistance, which while it does make a phone harder to repair, is also a good benefit for the average consumer. Kind of a good trade-off. For instance, you can go out right now and buy a relatively not too expensive phone, for instance the Galaxy A52, and it will have water resistance, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Nowadays, you can expect ratings as high as IP68 on all Samsung flagships since the S7, but what exactly does that mean, and how does it differ from IPX8 or IP6X? Well, to the code, this is rather simple if we have our chart from the IEC handy. The first number is for how tightly sealed your device is against hard objects, such as dust. The scale goes from 0, meaning no protection at all, to 6, which is dust tight. And the second number shows you how resistant your device is to liquids. The scale goes from 0, meaning no protection at all, all the way to 9, which means that your device should withstand high pressure and high temperature water jets. But that still doesn't answer the question, what exactly is IP, you know, X8? Like, what's the X? Well, the X symbol is different from the rest. It usually indicates that the device has not been tested for such resistance, meaning that a phone with an IPX7 rating is water resistant for depths up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes, and is of unknown dust resistance. On the topic of the number 7, the IP rating usually specifies the depth and time for it, but not for the 8th rating. To give an example, the iPhone 12 has an IP68 rating, meaning that it's dust proof. Regarding water resistance though, it's one level below the max and devices rated with an 8 should withstand being submerged in water depths, but those depths have to be specified by the manufacturer. In the case of the iPhone 12, it is advertised as being able to go as deep as 6 meters for 30 minutes. Now since there is no specific depth measurement, you do have a difference of course, for instance, on the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, it also has an IP68 rating, but it's only rated for going as deep as 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. Putting it this way shows us that the IP rating from the IEC is basically a minimum standard that the device has to pass in order to get certified. From that point on, companies may try to advertise higher or lower numbers for their resistance. So um, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a like, template. We also often see certain companies branding water resistant phones as being waterproof, which is pretty much wrong. No phone is truly waterproof because that would imply that water simply cannot penetrate the device or even if it managed to, it shouldn't really harm it. The icing on the cake is the fact that manufacturers can certify their devices themselves, which means that there could be bias in the testing procedure. Let's also not forget that the IP rating scale is not mutually inclusive, or in other words, a rating of IP66 is not less good or better than an IP68 rating, and a device can be certified for both, such as in the case of the Sony Xperia Z, which is certified for IP55 and IP57. Furthermore, age can and will degrade a phone's water or dust resistance. Rubber seals and glue tend to degrade with time. 
chlorine salt and heat also help if you have been in the pool or the sea during the summer which is why on some smart bands and smart watches you can see in the commercials commercials how they mention that they're not exactly uh, resistant to salt water dropping your phone is also a good way to lose your water or dust resistance since the impact from the fall could damage the glue holding the phone together or you could essentially chip off a part which could expose the inside of your you know electronic components and if that was enough most if not all companies don't cover water damage even if your phone is water resistant which is a bit of a madness but i can understand at the same time since you're a company trying to make money so if you bring your device to a certified repair center they usually check small stickers which turn from white to a certain bright color in order to indicate that water has been on the inside those stickers are usually on these tiny circuit circuit boards of your phone or on the inside of the screen anywhere on the inside actually but sometimes the damage is even more obvious if there is corrosion on the inside of your phone which happens if there is prolonged exposure to water now there are also rugged phones which companies like to produce from time to time and market as being better at impact protection and water resistance. Phones such as the Galaxy S7 and Galaxy S8, for instance, received rugged variants um, such as the Galaxy S7 Active and Galaxy S8 Active respectively, which were, you know, marketed at the time as being pretty hardcore and rugged. I remember a um, commercial, was it, from a certain YouTuber where they actually played uh, hockey with the S8 Active. It was pretty fun, I gotta admit, but at the same time, it, you kind of wonder, are they really that more resistant than regular phones? Well, of course, as it turned out, they weren't really that better at water resistance or dust resistance than regular devices. In essence, some of them do have an advantage by having a rubber flap to seal the charging port or headphone jack, which it's kind of easier to service than actually having a rubber seal on the inside of your charging port or headphone jack and it's also more secure but at the same time you could also forget to kind of close the flap and water could go inside so there are pros and cons to this sort of design now essentially there are non-rugged phones which also use this type of design for helping water resistance for instance the samsung galaxy s5 was one such device and from the rugged variants, we have almost all the Blackview phones and also some other phones. So essentially, if you want a device which has a rubber, you know, kind of cap, you actually have to check individually. Another benefit and also disadvantage to rugged phones is that sometimes they incorporate a plastic display instead of a glass one. Immediately to your head pops up, plastic? That's cheap. But at the same time, plastic is also more durable to kind of impacts. Basically, it's not really great at scratches or melting because as you may have thought up, if you leave it on the dashboard of your car, such a device would have its screen melted and leave white spots on it. But at the same time, if you were to drop your device off, and this is actually a good thing since it won't really crack and let water inside, or dust for that matter. So as a conclusion to our quick trip around the history of water resistance, the IP rating is a universal form of measurement by which you can tell how dust and water resistant an electronic device is. And as easy as it is to decode an IP rating, it's not the ultimate way to judge a device resistance to the elements. And as much as companies would like to sell you the idea of the perfect water and dust resistant phone, such a device does not exist. Sure, some rugged variants exist which are slightly better, but they're still far from the mark of waterproof. So by all means, check third-party tests and read the warranty carefully the next time you decide to buy a phone or any electronic device in general with an IP rating. So, if I missed anything, please let me know down in the comments below if, or if I made any errors. I'm human after all. So uh, please subscribe to Phone Arena and I'll see you guys some other time.